Some are in the milk. Some are in the meat. And we're not going to mock either one. God reveals things to his people the way he sees fit. Now, with that being said, let's get into some scripture. Starting here in Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or in the new moon, or of the Sabbath which is a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Now, if we rightly divide Scripture, like 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us, then we can understand here what the Father is getting at. There are some that are looking at the feast. And we understand that Jesus to perfection fulfilled the spring feast, so it makes sense to us that he also fulfills the fall feast, which we believe according to his word that he filled to perfection the spring feast in order he will do the same in the fall feast but we are not to mock those and make fun of those that are in the meat that would be me and others that see the things that are happening in this world we're not to mock those we're to listen to those people and that's not a pat on my back because i'm not perfect my jesus knows that but with that being said, we're also not to mock those that are still in the milk. There are so many babes out there that are in the milk that don't understand and don't see what we see. And that's not their fault. They were not taught. That falls back on their pastors and their churches and their congregations or, or whatever it may be. Or maybe they're just now coming to the fold. Well, we must open our arms to them in loving embrace and share with them the scriptures, which I just did. We are looking for the new moon, that slither of hope, not in a date, because we understand that the Feast of Trumpets takes, a, takes two days, and we don't know the exact day or the exact hour in which he plans to return. That being perfectly fit in with the Feast of Trumpets, it also fits perfectly in with the wedding traditions of the Galilean people at that time. We also understand this in John chapter 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. Jesus is telling his people, and he also tells us in John 14 as well, when Philip was asking him, well, Lord, if this is true, then show us the Father. And he says, Philip, have I not been with you so long that you don't already see? When you see me, you see the Father. He is telling them, and he has told us time and time again, him and God are one. Which means when he spoke those things in Matthew for the Jews, and in Mark for the lukewarm church, he was letting them know who he was, and when it was he was planning to return. To me, that makes sense. And if you notice this, in Luke's gospel, in the day and the hour in which no man knows, not the Son, but the Father only, nor the angels, but the Father only. That phrase is not found. Because the bride of Christ that are in the meat are looking for it and see it. And again, that brings us back to what I believe is the Feast of Trumpets. God, Jesus, knew for a fact when it was he planned to return. Because to the day he fulfilled Passover, to the day he fulfilled unleavened bread, and he fulfilled first fruits, which was our first rapture. In reference to that, you can go to Matthew 27, verses 50 through 53. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 9, he grabbed the saints. There was an earthquake type event that happened. He grabbed the saints that was under the earth in Abraham's bosom and he took them before God because he is also our high priest and our high priest's responsibility is to bring a burnt offering to the Lord and he did that before the Lord as our first fruits so we understand that that rapture event has already taken place and there are other places where a rapture event has taken place Enoch was translated Elijah or Elisha one of them was translated or taking, taken up. 
and his garment was left behind, which is where we get the idea that our clothes will be left behind. With that being said, throughout all of Scripture, there are so many different indications of a rapture type event happening prior to, whether we like it or not, the wrath of God being poured out. We are basing our works on if we're worthy enough to handle the tribulation. And friends, let me make it clear. There are a lot of people out there, a lot of strong people in the faith. My uncle, who is a pastor, being one of them, that believes we are going to have to go through the tribulation period. But in my heart, that negates what Jesus did for us at the cross at Calvary. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 18 says that we have a hope and a comfort in this. We would not have a hope and a comfort if we were stuck in the middle of that wrath and that chaos and that craziness. Because at times, flesh would take over and we would indeed have fear. There's no doubt in my mind. Because we still know who's on the throne even when tornadoes are flying around, even if an earthquake happens or even if other crazy things take place. We still have that human fear, that flesh. And God is telling us to be at comfort with one another. Because Jesus will sound our trumpet. In Matthew, there's a trumpet blast sounding for the Jews. In Mark, it doesn't say that there's a trumpet blast sounding. It just says that the angels will come down and gather his children, his elect. In Luke, it does not mention that at all. It asks you to be worthy, to be accounted worthy, to escape all of these things. He is telling us about the rapture of the church prior to the tribulation. Galatians chapter 1, verses 10 through 14. That you might walk worthy, accounted worthy, of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. We are increasing in these last days. Strengthening with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in lights. First Thessalonians chapter five, children of the day, children of the light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness again, first Thessalonians five and hath translated us, who else do we know in scripture, scripture that's been translated, into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Yet another scripture that tells us that we will be indeed raptured out of here prior to the wrath that is to come. So many want to uh, want to quote uh, Second Thessalonians as well, saying that there will be a falling away first, and they believe that to be the the falling away of those that believe in the rapture of the church, and that is also not the case. Second Thessalonians here tells us this: Praise be to heavenly Father. Once I find it, First Thessalonians even. Chapter 1, verse 10, And to wait for the Son from heaven, who, who he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us, past tense, from the wrath to come. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him, that you soon not be shaken in mind, nor troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, that that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Then the son of perdition be revealed. That falling away is speaking of the sin that is obviously abounding right now in this world, and it's only going to get worse. The gathering is in verse 1. We again being raptured prior to the wrath. I love you.